All right. Welcome everyone to Tuesday Tuesday, another epic, epic week. There's a lot going on in the do, but what we're going to start doing now is that the first Tuesday, Tuesday of every month, we're going to start going over what's the newest and latest that's happening within the game guide and how Hype is being run and operated by the community. Hold on, it's kind of distracting as I have to keep letting people in and it doesn't let me not do the waiting room. So just one second. Okay. All right, so we're going to dive right into this. I'm going to go over a couple things that's been occurring lately within the change of the rules. So let me dive into that. Bear with my brain, it's getting a little bit late. Uh, I want to make this pretty quick. This will just be a quick summary because there's a lot to dive into on the do front today. So um, first and foremost, we want to focus on what Haifa's actual mission is. And that's to build dApps and tools to facilitate humanity's transition to a global regenerative and thriving civilization. So I bring this up because there's been a little bit of confusion about what Haifa is meant to be doing and who's showing up to Haifa and what value they're wanting to contribute. So we always wanted to have it within the lens of, are we building these tools to help support this transition and what do those tools look like? So it's just a starting point that we always want to kick it off from. Okay. Next up, a lot of you guys have heard about this idea of a quest that we're starting to initiate. Before it was really about roles and a little bit about contributions, but now we're starting to see a lot more happen on the quest front. And I wanted to open up the space to have anyone ask any questions that they had about this, but also to kind of elucidate how quests and challenges are being run at the moment. Um, so this is a three different ways that people can add value into Haifa, either through a role which is essentially just a recurring quest or a quest. And what a quest is, is it's, I would like to do X and I would like Y for doing it. And what's nice about a quest is that someone then signals to the community first, if the community actually wants what Y is. So I think there's been some confusion on the contribution front where people have been you know, adding a lot of value from their perspective, doing some things, and then later, and sometimes it's even been months later, coming to the Haifa do and being like, hey, you know, I've added all this value and I would like to get a contribution for it. And then historically, this happened the last couple of weeks, members aren't supporting it. And they're saying like, why, why is this not being supported? And then members are responding with, well, we never said that we actually wanted this particular thing. Um, so that's the idea of a quest, is the quest can get rid of that ambiguity, and then the community has a chance up front to say that, yes, we want this contribution, so that when someone goes to the effort of actually doing the contribution, it doesn't get voted down or doesn't get enough support afterwards, and there's frustration. So ultimately, what we want to see is the do itself is the only point of truth, and the single source of truth that can't lie. So as long as everything's going through the do, then it's going to be a lot easier I don't want to pass someone else off to be the host. Just keep going. Just do it. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to keep admitting people. Cool. If you do some other be, if some other is the co-host, they also can let people in. So you don't have to do everything. If you, you can make me a co-host, I can do that for you if you want. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to make you a co-host, but if I make you host, could you just keep adding people? There you go. Thank you. Awesome. Oh yeah, so okay, so these are the three ways. So basically how a quest works today is show up to the do, say, I would like to do X, I would like to get Y for it and put that into the actual description and then don't ask for that amount yet. And then this allows the current membership to then vote yes, they want that quest to happen or no, it do they don't. And this is just in lieu until the quest tools actually get up and going, which are coming soon. So contributions are still there, but as always, contributions carry the most risk, the highest freedom, but there is an opportunity or an option that um, contributions aren't actually voted up. So I want to make that very clear that people who are getting ready to do a contribution, if they don't signal to the community beforehand, there is a chance that it might not actually be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mink, mink, mink. And uh, yeah, please meet yourself. Awesome. 
Um, cool. Is there any questions on the contribution quest role that I'd love to open up the space if there is any confusion here? I have, um, uh, I'm not sure if the question, I guess, I guess a confirmation um, that if you want to do a quest, you could also potentially um, request a portion of the value that you're requesting up front so that it kind of can duplicate what an invoice would might look like when you want like 50% or 25% of the fee uh, upon approval and then the rest at the end. Would that also be a possibility? Everything's a possibility in the hyper world. Um, absolutely. And it's already kind of designed that way where you can ask for a down payment up front. So you can say, hey, I want to do this quest. You know, I'm looking for 10% or whatever the percent is up front. And then if you are wanting that down payment up front, then you put that in the, the actual field below because that's what's going to pay out if the quest passes. Um, so yeah, absolutely. You can design a quest that way. It's up to you. And then of course it's up to the members whether or not they want to vote for a quest design that way. So, but I think that sounds very reasonable for request. Um, any other questions on the, the three here? Reiki, a question on uh, role. Um, right now there is uh, upfront, uh, when you put the role out there, you're saying, hey, a particular band, right? Uh, will that change as well or will that remain as it is? Will the band change? Well, do you have to actually specify how much you're asking for upfront and role? Because in the quest you said, you can potentially just say what you're gonna contribute, what you're gonna create value. And subsequently, you could actually say, hey, this is what I need, right? Is the role gonna be the similar way or uh, it's gonna stay as it is? Um, I, don't, I don't think we're making any changes to the roles, at least not yet. Okay. Uh, essentially, it's the same thing. You're asking for a band payment, but, and bands are just a way of making things a little bit simpler. You can really ask okay. for any amount of salary within a role. So okay. yeah. the bands are just a way of simplifying it and helping people conceptualize how much to actually ask for based okay. on the complexity of their, their contributions. Yeah. Yep. Um, Beautiful. Any other questions on the contribution types or is it pretty clear for everyone? Awesome, cool. So just to say one more time, the do is the single source of truth. So if it hasn't gone through the do yet, we wanna get rid of any sort of expectations that there's something if it hasn't happened in the do, that's kind of like the whole point of it is to do something that helps everyone come to the single point of agreement that is immutable and transparent and very clear and helps everyone come to an alignment here. Um, it's one of those things that are really helpful when we're building a global decentralized movement to have tools like this that actually help us know and see that we're all on the exact same page. Cool. Um, something else that we're doing and bringing into reality at the moment is badges. So let me speak to those just a little bit. Uh, I thought we had a beautiful chart with badges here, but must be on another one of my decks. So I will leave up this image for you guys while I talk about that. Or I'll show you. Cool, so badges aren't a role, they're not a contribution. Badge belongs to a member. There's something that I, the piece of information about a particular account. So for example, one of the badges that we see going up right now this loads, is the enroller badge. So in order to be able to enroll new members into the do, you need to hold this enroller badge. So what this says is that member is then allowed to enroll people. Um, so we can have all sorts of different types of badges. And this is where we're going to go through the process of kind of ideating right now is identifiers for particular accounts. Something we're going to start exploring with, just to give a concept here, is we wanted to do governance where people who are voting on a particular category might have more weight if they're part of that category. So for example, if you're contributing to the storytelling side of things, then every time you contribute there, you're gonna earn some points towards this storytelling badge. And if you have the storytelling badge, when you vote on storytelling proposals, your voice is gonna be more than if you were voting on other proposals. So this is how we can start then directing more voice towards um, things that you will have more information about. 
and a badge is a way of signaling and identifying that. Um, so anyway, badges, it's a completely new area. It's a new territory we're playing with. I think there's a lot of really interesting things we can grow out of this, but I did want to bring that up as a new feature that we've added. And open the space if there's any questions about badges. OK, easy. Uh, I see a bunch of chats, so are any of these related to me? Okay, beautiful. I'm Doesn't... following up the chat. If there's a question, I will let you know. Beautiful, all right. If I could say just something about badges and uh, some more. Um, this is very important to, to uh, realize the difference between badges and roles, right? Because uh, for a badge, you can't have an explicit expectation on someone. So even if you, if you have the enroller badge and you have the power to enroll people, you don't have the expectation that these people should be enrolling people. If you want this, this person to be enrolling someone, they need to be in a kind of an en enroller hole role right <laughs> this is a tongue twister okay so that that's that's the difference the, the badges they can confer you powers or or perks but they there shouldn't be any attached uh accountability or responsibility to the badge if we need that we need a role a role is for when you want someone to do something uh from time to time in a in a very clear way uh, and be held clearly accountable for that. So a badge can give you uh, recognition and, and powers, but it shouldn't give you uh, any explicit uh, accountability. So I just wanted to bring this up. Awesome, thank you. Um, I'm not gonna open that up any further because it'll just add too much complexity. But <laughs> uh, is there any other questions or thoughts uh, about badges before we move on? Then if not, I'm gonna share this game guide in the chat. For those of you who have not gone through it, I highly recommend it. Um, you'll see over here in the corner, some that are skipped, so just feel free to skip them as well when you're going through them. We're just building things. This is a working deck, a lot's changing and a lot's evolving. Um, I'll leave it at that for this week, um, 15 minutes into this. We'll spend about the same amount of time, 15 minutes each, beginning of each um, month, kind of going over this and we'll take it apart section by section and kind of have a deeper learning lessons and debating it and evolving it and continue to grow this uh, global movement together. Last piece I want to leave you all with is Haifa is evolving. It's evolving really rapidly. So nothing is set in stone. Um, and this is all subject to change to better meet and serve our needs. And that's really the whole point of the do. It's not here to force us into some weird structure. It's here for us to evolve and redesign the structure to better meet our needs, not the other way around. So if we ever see something in the do that's being problematic or preventing us from being able to serve our purpose in the most beautiful way possible, then let's change the do. We don't need to change you. Um, cool. It's actually one of the policies in the do is to change it before we try to change people because changing people is a lot harder than changing code. Okay. <laughs> um, cool. Any other thoughts that someone wants to really share into the space as far as something that's really important for people to know about the, the game and how it's being played? Um, last but not least, I put this in the Haifa channel, but I think it's worth mentioning again. We are Haifa. So I know in the old world game, it's kind of like there's people and then there's employees and there's shareholders and they all have different interests and typically they're trying to actually um, take advantage of the other group. So the game typically in corporations is how much can I take from the corporation before it tries to fire me or something. And the same thing from the corporation is how much can I take from employees before they want to quit or unionize? Um, and if there's a poor working environment that they can take, take, take and exploit people. And that's kind of one of the problems with our current economic system. Okay, but in Haifa, there isn't that dichotomy because every member is a co-owner. We're the investors, we're the shareholders, we're the employees, we're the managers. It's like 
every member is every one of those roles. So we don't actually have that separation anymore. So it's really important that as we go through this, we recognize we are hypha. It's not like, how can we take from hypha? Because that looks like, how can I take from myself? So I know it's a little bit of a different game, but I just kind of see those dynamics coming up. So the next Tuesday, what we're going to do, and we'll be doing this every second Tuesday, is we're going to go over all the financial accounting. So typically, this has been done in like a small circle, and it's kind of been getting held in a smaller amount of hands. It wasn't intentional just because the tools weren't there. Um, now they're getting to the point where we're going to start sharing them every single second Tuesday. So we're all making the financial decisions together as we are. And so I know it's adding a little bit more responsibility on every member to try to consider all of this, but it is one of the, the elements of self-directed and self-governing and all these beautiful things that we're doing collectively. So anyway, I'll, I'll leave my rambling off at that and I will just facilitate today and just keep my run going. How does that sound? Cool. All right, so we have two roles. Um, we have, I'll start with Scott because I'm going to actually speak for Steph and I don't want to keep talking. So I'm going to pass this to Scott Morris to speak about his role. Sure. Thanks, Reiki. Hey, everybody. Um, so I put this forward last week. I've since uh, drafted a longer uh, role summary here, which I'll put in the chat. And yeah. I really just wanted to get something forward because it's been about 11 months since I started working in Haifa. So I've been in the mix uh, for quite a while. Um, the area that I focus the most on is on bioregions, uh, which is about you know, local community instances of uh, the do and use of uh, passport, light wallet, et cetera all of these technical offerings that Haifa is building uh, need to you know, be relevant for use on the ground. Uh, otherwise, you know, we're, we're, we're stuck with our head in the clouds. Um, and I, that's not a criticism so much as it's an acknowledgement that we all have our own different lanes here. Uh, but the rationale behind my proposal is that you know, basically I, this, is, this is the space that I've been operating in for about 11 years now. Uh, I, in 2008, 2009, my family was hit by the last financial crisis and I went headlong into community currencies and found my way to uh, Stuart Valentine, uh, which I know, our, our, you know his whole group is in discussion with seeds now. Uh, he's a socially uh, responsible investment advisor and he took me under his wing and incubated our first currency design process. It took about a year uh, we ran a couple of pilots. I was in a documentary for this work as the local currency guy. Uh, and since then, I've just like continued in that vein. I now live in Ithaca, New York, where I'm responsible for local currency in Ithaca, which is a bit of a thing. Um, it's not been an easy run, I'll tell you. Uh, but I've had a very unique uh, opportunity and journey to explore this space in uh, detail. Uh, I don't, I'm not a person who believes in a silver bullet approach. There's no one model uh, that rules them all or that is the perfect solution everywhere. Uh, but it's more about uh, taking a, a do-like approach of, look, equip people with infrastructure, help them ask better questions about what their priorities are, and uh, enable them with resources to do more good uh, where they are there. So um, I coach a number of communities uh, in addition to Fiscal responsibilities. I work with a team in Uganda. Uh, I've met a number of other people uh, through the bioregional cross pollination circles. Um, and I've also worked with Palo and Tiala in the ecosystem mapping space, uh, which is where uh, in Miro we've been attempting to kind of sense make across the entire Haifa and seed ecosystems uh, to help clarify a lot of these value flows. Um, so uh, I am putting this forward as a B7, because after these 11 months of hanging out and listening and trying to see if there's someone else who has so clear of a sense of it, uh, I, I just have not heard that. And I mean, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I am advocating for my own cause. I'm literally one of the best people in the world 
at doing community currency uh, system design here. I'm one of the only people that has operated at every level at the, uh, the local bottom up level, the middle national bioregional level and a global level and understand how to do the scale linking between a local instance and a global ecosystem. Uh, and I feel like that is a really substantial contribution. Um, I have been playing along, uh, but I have also been holding back. Uh, I would really like to have a scenario arise where I can share my knowledge more fully uh, and do that in a way that is in full alignment with uh, what to do. So happy to take questions, comments, concerns. Yeah, I have a question, like what circle is this in? Uh, that, that is a fair question, uh, Nick. Uh, basically what has happened over the past month or so is we had a small circle of people from tech and from movement building uh, that recognize that there's a, a gap between those circles right now. Um, specifically when we were doing the work around um, alliance activation and creating the forms for like taking in these alliances and getting them situated in the ecosystem. Uh, the infrastructure that was getting set up there is off in its own silo and not connected to a uh, core product. Uh, so there is some need to kind of bridge that gap. Um, I have brought this into movement building circle and they kind of said, this is transcendent and inclusive of movement building. Um, so I, I, there was a suggestion to create a circle for this. I don't know if that's necessary, um, but basically I see a need for, for linking movement building tech and finance because there's some implications for the token economics on the bottom up level and how that connects in. So it's movement building? It, we, we could put it in movement building. Uh, I'm open to other suggestions. What I hear is that you are proposing a kind of a, maybe a new circle, like a product circle, and that would be uh, a role to explore this this new circle at anchored at the anchor circle as well. So, it, because it, it, it didn't, uh, I mean, looks like it's not yet inside the movement building circle or the tech circle. So it should it could be in anchored at the anchor circle. That's what I hear. Yeah, I'm I'm I, I'm I'm okay with that. Really, uh, I'm really just trying to feel out what's what everyone agrees is most appropriate here. You know, it's like that and how, how we title the thing. Like, I, I don't I don't put as much weight on that. Um, but there definitely is like if I had to say there's one focus or emphasis, it's basically taking all the ingredients that we have now, as far as technical feature sets and movement building assets, like I'm, I'm very high level 10,000 foot on this and organizing things for a community level product, right? That is, I think the weak link in the seeds equation right now. And, I, and, and by the way, like I just had a, a phone call with Stuart Valentine uh, from Fairfield, Iowa, where I did my first currency pilot, right? I am their go-to currency guy and same holds for a lot of other folks out there. I just built that level of credibility for myself in this space. Um, we don't have a product right now that is relevant for a local implementation, like for bioregion use. I know that we're just getting into creating, you know, what an MVP would look like uh, for like a, a bioregional dashboard or community level dashboard. That 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 that's in here, and I want to share it. Like I've, I've just been able to sit with these problems for long enough that I, I know what this stuff looks like here with my deep expertise. Um, so I, I see a lot of confusion that's been happening in movement building spaces and tech spaces, an awful lot of guessing that's going on around what is relevant or important here. And my hope is to short circuit that learning curve um, to, to the best of my ability. And, I'm, and again, I'm not trying to be arrogant or anything. This is just what I have to offer. Just, just wanted to add something. When, when we are proposing a role, the role should not be attached to a person. The role is for the organization. It's a role that belongs to Haifa. So why Haifa needs this role? 
And then after the role is approved, then you will be proposing an assignment for yourself to this role, right? So this is another uh, stage where you talk about yourself and talk about how you fit into that role. But for this stage, what you are proposing is uh, how this role will benefit HIFA as the organism. So that's the uh, that's this part that we're talking about. So uh, yeah. that's why we're asking why, uh, where, in which circle this uh, role belong and how it's going to operate from that circle. Right. So yeah, my, my, if I, so to, to that point then, um, basically, uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of how the, the, the seeds and, and the hyphen ecosystem operate, right? I enjoy the concept of decentralized holonic organizations. Um, I think we can all agree that it's, that, that it can be very messy, you know, that there's, there's, there's so much room that it, it ends up, uh, leaving a lot of room for, for, for noise to show up or for a confusion for, uh, duplicate conversations. Um, and so there's a need for a focal point, right, uh, around, I think, the community problem. Right, and that and that and that has implications for, you know, for finance, for tech products, and for movement building, uh, and even for, for storytelling. You know, because we're creating uh, a, a platform then an offering that is um, that creates different value propositions, right? Then um, then occur on the global. Yeah, level. I'm going to step in with the facilitator hat real quick, just noting the time that we have a bunch to cover today. So typically, only give about five minutes to each one of these things. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, oh, no, that's, that's totally fine. So uh, just maybe take 30 seconds to say anything else you want to say about this, and then we can keep going forward. Hang on. I just want to step oh, in quick okay. um, from People Circle. Maybe, Scott, I don't know if you've spoken to uh, Yoast, because I haven't spoken to you yet, but it might be really helpful for you from this perspective with the role creation to see the use case for Haifa, because uh, Julio's right. This is not you, you know, you in this role yet, but it might be really helpful for you to identify that role creation with Yoast, who is specifically you know, actioning the role creation. So I would say action to reach out to him for that. I have had that, had that conversation, and this role proposal is a result of that. Okay. Um, I do want to clarify. Um, I know there is the product lead role here specified. And thanks, Julio, for clarifying that. But as Scott said, it has additional details which are different in the, correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, uh, in the doc, uh, the Google doc. So just to clarify, because the, I think the verbiage is different between uh, what is actually out here as a role and in the uh, Google doc that he has uh, furnished. Yes, that, that is true. I put this forward uh, last week. I basically committed to our um, movement building and tech convergence circle that I would put something forward last week. So I wanted to make sure that I honored that. Uh, but the link uh, Google Doc does have different content than you're finding in the role proposal. So, so where I'm going with this is the intent is the Google Doc is the one you should look at in terms of the role definition and not what is actually out here. I wanted to clarify that because there was some gap. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I just want to say one thing here about uh, what Scott just uh, keeps referring to, Stuart Valentine, and the connection with Stuart Valentine. Many of you don't know him yet, uh, but he is a very good personal close friend of mine. And uh, he's actually a candidate uh, for uh, down the road for a seeds uh, grant request. <clears throat> and uh, he did set up a uh, currency. I, I thank you for this, but we're going to keep running with the do because we have a lot to cover. Um, okay. Anyway, just share that in the Discord. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, and if you have any questions for Scott, you can find them in the Discord and we can take that conversation there. Um, Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thank you, Scott. Um, cool. So tech evangelist, that's another role here. Uh, Steph is sleeping at the particular moment. So he asked me to bring this up for him. Um, so what Steph's been working on lately has been the APIs for uh, Seeds itself. So Siege widgets for making payments on, you know, Wix and WordPress and things like that. 
Um, he's also building a different couple other implementations and integrations into his local scale. Uh, for example, the ability for organizations to be able to take a payment with a debit card and sell people seeds. So this is a way of like decentralizing how people can buy seeds too. Um, and just different things of that nature. Um, so if you have any questions about this particular role, don't ask me, ask Steph. Um, most of you know him, but otherwise he's found under local scale and discord if you have any questions about this particular role. Um, unless there's a really obvious one you want to ask me, we'll keep going. Cool. Um, cool. Now we're going to head over to role assignments. All right. Um, these two voting period ended, so we'll skip them and we're going to go to CC Hart, who's sitting right next to me. Hey guys, this is actually just a renewal of my current role. It's what well, it expired, so it's got the deliverables of the last cycle because it was only a one cycle role. So everything that has come out of that role, not everything, but many of the things that have come out of that role are here detailed within um, the do that you can see. It's been extended for three cycles. And if you have any questions, I am all ears open to it. So it looks like she's this one, getting a this one shows this one shows that it ends uh, in January. So it's only one cycle. Um, it says three. Oh, but that's assuming a start on 10. So you're right. She's extending it for one cycle. One cycle it is. <laughs> the do and I always playing dancing games. So one cycle. And um, then uh, some goals. So she's been talking about this. I don't well, I don't that. need to take time. I mean, if you okay. guys if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. But otherwise, just continuing on Haifa Hydrations. Um, the women of Haifa is in the works. We've got lots of fun things with Friends of Seeds coming up. And just overall, you know, keeping the organism healthy, happy with a human and the ecosystem in balance. So that's the work that I try to do in all of my capacity. So that's what I'm going to continue on. Um, and facilitating for you all, which you might be happy about, the digital detox. So that's coming up this, this cycle. Does anybody have any other questions? Easy. Yeah. All right, Luigi, are you with us? Yep, hello everyone. So this is my second role, uh, it's the one that concerns what I'm doing uh, on the web, so the seat library, I'm actually working on the new design, the new develop for the seat library, <coughs> join seeds too, plus all the works like the design for the, the widget, the plugin, so everything that is web goes under this role. And for that, I'm asking um, an edit to the economic part, so I'm sure Shifting from 100% deferred seed to, I think, 72 or 73%. Yeah, 73 deferred, and so 17 uh, in Bitcoin. If you have any question, I'm here. Um, also, this looks like it's ending 12.8. Is that what you intended? Because that would be seven days from now, or sorry, oh. 11 days from now. Seven days. Seven days. I didn't notice. I just, I just changed the economy part, and I didn't change. Well, I think I can, I, I can, jump, I, I can just extend the role, right? When it's, uh, when it's yeah. 10, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think we'll be seeing this exact same role next week. <laughs> So put up another one, yeah. and then it'll be extended by the time this one closes. I do not know. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. Any questions for Luigi? I have just a general question. Like, I'm not sure are role expiration dates actually enforced right now or not? That's not actually for Luigi. That's just uh, for anybody who might know that. 
the role expiration date is is technically not enforced at the moment. To it, it was, but uh, we loosened it a little bit in order to support uh, assignment renewals. Uh, but of course, assignment expiration dates are strictly enforced. But yeah, at some point, once we enable budgeting, uh, the roles will be included in that process and the expirations will be strictly enforced at that time. Good question, though. Uh, for a tiny bit of clarity, this is an assignment. So this is the expiration for the assignment, which is enforced. But what they were talking about was the roles, like over here, where this role said it was only six months or six cycles, but that's not enforced. So that's the distinction going on here. Um, <clears throat> awesome. So we're going to move on to contributions. All right. Uh, first up, Basil, are you with us? Or yep, yep, I'm here. There it is. Cool. All right. Uh, quickly, this is a contribution um, request for uh, allocation to uh, uh, produce and um, get through the first batch of in app um, faces of seeds videos uh, that are ultimately going to be like quest uh, content generating quest um, showcase videos. And that's all this uh, request is for is just to fast track those as soon as our art and animation team finishes their job, um, then we'll move right into finishing the videos that go into the in app. Um, and this is just the first batch of videos to kind of test the, the system. Um, so yeah, any questions? The numbers are a little off, but the final um, uh, report based upon actual time for edit will come in before the final request budget for, for a payment on completion. So just to clarify, this is the total is 5,000. Is that then are you saying that's not the total to have these actually produced or? The five that's uh, pre-production. That's an estimate. The five thousand is not essentially not guaranteed. Uh, this is kind of a deliverable based quest. So when the the three videos are completed, and the report of time per video per task is detailed and outlined, because this is meant to be a scale operation in the future, um, then we will. Uh, the, the final report will come in for the final contribution. Is, is that the correct way? So 5,000 is more like the estimate. Estimate, yes. It could yes, be something yes, yes. different. Got it. It's just a ballpark, yep. It's kind of a max cap is what it is. All right. Well, uh, 5,500 is max cap, yeah. <laughs> So 5,000 is the estimate, 5,500 is the most it would be, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, it'll probably come under. Okay. Um, any questions for Basil? I just wanted to comment that um, uh, I think this is the, until we get the real Quest uh, UI capabilities, I think this is the right way that people do things where they say, this is what I intend to do. I want everybody to know. Please vote if you like this. Uh, and then later on, when they actually do it, then they come back and ask to be paid. Um, yeah, I also want to parrot that. This is uh, beautiful and to the point. I love this personally, you know, as small as word as possible, straight to the point. You have your key results, your objectives, what you're actually trying to deliver, the costs. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a great example of how to do a quest um, for those interested. That's not to say that I'm, you know, trying to say we should vote or not vote for this. I'm saying the, the design was beautifully designed. Yeah. Being neutral here, facilitator hat. Um, cool. Any other questions for Basil? Cool. Um, moving on to Cece then. She's right next to me. I'll pass it to her. Okay, so this is the people circle proposal. 
We recognize that uh, the circles haven't necessarily been voted on by the ecosystem. And so this is our experiment with proposing accountabilities for a circle. So we've um, made it very easy to, to read so that you know now what the people circle is accountable for, what they're doing. And we hope to use this model for uh, the other circles moving forward. So if you, you know, if you like this model, you can have a quick peek at it. If you have any updates, concerns, questions, or additions that you feel, maybe you think something belongs in the people circle. Maybe there's a question that you have. Uh, why is this not in the accountabilities of the people circle? What we found is that cross board through circles, there's a lot of expectations from other circles and what a certain circle might be doing. And we want this to be the way to look back in the do that's been voted upon and say, you know, no, actually my circle is not accountable for this where yes, actually you're right. My circle is accountable for this. So this is an experiment. Like I said, it's open to, uh, to play. You can have um, some say in it if you like, and just we, we ask that you vote yes if you like it. If you have anything to add, I guess you could abstain or vote no and we can edit it as necessary. But currently the people circle comprises of myself and Yost, and these are the accountabilities that we in our two roles are responsible and gatekeeping at this time. So does anybody have any questions about that? Yeah, what's the consequence of voting this in? What happens as a result of that? The people circle then becomes publicly accountable for <laughs> those deliverables that are highlighted here. Yeah, this is an effort of Yoast to make everything very explicit, all the rules that are playing. So, you know, when a circle comes in with its accountabilities, it would go through the do as well you know, painted into the immutable record of history of what they're actually accountable to. And this actually helps us know what circles to come to for what. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is really beautiful for every circle as they start forming for them to like be really clear what their accountabilities are. That way, when someone else comes to them, it's like, hey, do X, Y, or Z. If it's not part of your accountabilities, you could say, no, it's not part of my accountabilities. And then it might be a discuss discussion that we need to take to a governance call and be like, hey, should this be part of this circle? Do we need to make another circle, et cetera? Yeah, and I also want to note too that this is an evolving type thing. So yes, it could be voted on now, but with all of the circular structures, as we you know vote them in, they always can be adjusted as new members come in or as accountabilities for the circle change based off what we see we need. So this is currently what we've seen in our circle that is you know required is necessary for our roles to maintain, and this is um us just showing you and being upfront and transparent with you to what we uh, want to accomplish. Uh, okay, any questions on the people circle proposal on what their accountabilities are? Easy. All right, we're gonna move on to the next one, which is an onboarding process created by the people circle of the same. So I'll pass that back to Cece again. All right, so this one's super fun. This has been my baby for the last month. Um, we have a lot of iterations of how this could have looked, but this particular slideshow that you can, you know, click on this link and have a look at details. Some are we gonna show us the screen? Quick. We'll just share the screen with you. Super. Well, never quick. mind. I don't have access. Well, all right. Unfortunate. I will fix that. Either way, it is making use of badges and quests so that the onboarding process is a lot more seamless, a lot more fun, a lot more integrated. One of the biggest complaints that we have in People Circle is that the onboarding process is confusing. People don't know where to go. They don't know what's expected of them. They don't know the rules. And so this new process, which hopefully you can all have access to soon, uh, alleviates that by making it fun. So first of all, the process is, you know, new members coming into the do get a badge that signals that they are they have a score badge and they get to kind of be visitors and interact with the ecosystem from a guest lens just seeing where they might feel comfortable where they might feel drawn to and 
everyone can be helpful and welcoming and kind. And then we have a program that is a apprenticeship mentorship program where uses of badges come into play. I'm not gonna go into this too, too much because it's all available for you in a slideshow, but just to give you, you know, the fun stuff. And then my favorite part is the super mushroom, which you can request through a proposal if you have an immediate need for your skill set. So in many cases, this might be technologically based, um, or maybe we might have a conflict that requires a certain skill set. In any case, uh, you can request a super mushroom to push you through. But if you do request a super mushroom, you won't. <laughs> yeah, it's super fun. You won't have any hyper voice earned during that point because you haven't gone through the steps to integrate yourself and connect with the ecosystem in a way that we have uh, kind of built up for you guys. So this is our fun, exciting new process. If you like it, you are free to vote yes. If you have any updates or suggestions or anything like that, then you're welcome to message me directly on Discord or I put here uh, my email that you can just email me if you, if, that, if you prefer that. But if anybody has any questions right now, I know you can't see it on Reiki's screen, but if you have any questions right now, I'm happy to answer them too. Awesome. And we'll probably have a separate call here really soon to go over this onboarding process. That might be really nice. But either way, the slideshow is straightforward. Um, feel free to check it out and bring it to Discord to discuss it. Actually, we can go over it on the eight call on Thursday. Just throwing that out there, so. Cool. Um, any questions for CC before we move forward? There's only one request from Mark in the chat that CC might open the Google Doc for others to read it. I'm going to change the settings. Yes. Right now. She is changing the Thank settings. Thank you. And uh, maybe just post it in uh, the Discord for good measure in case it doesn't work. It will also be in the Tuesday, Tuesday notes. It'll also be in the Tuesday, Tuesday notes. Cool. Um, all right, Tyler, do we have a Tyler with us? Yep, hello. Excellent. Um, floor's yours. Great, thanks, Reggie. Hi all, um, my name is Tyler. I have been um, since in and over the past two months, mainly with the movement building circle and some of the bi regional conversations um, and something that's become quite clear for many people's perspectives um, is that we're really missing some insight into the policy landscape around uh, local economies adopting cryptocurrency as well as individual users concerns about what it means for when they start to adopt a cryptocurrency. Um, and that's that's one aspect and then the whole other aspect is around privacy compliance and GDPR. Um, and I know there's been some conversations from that around the blockchain and from a HIFA perspective, but given that we're starting to gather in bulk um, alliance data and user data through things like Google Forms or eventually a CRM, um, that's not occurring on the blockchain and that will need some clear protocols around privacy compliance that we want to make sure ambassadors, everyone in the movement building is up to snuff on. So that's one side of it is GDPR, but then I think the meteor section is how do we ensure ambassadors and folks trying to set up alliances have clear insights into what are the sorts of questions and concerns that potential users and new users have about what adopting cryptocurrency means for the laws in their country, for uh, the taxation that they're gonna have to consider filing for this year and how complicated that might be given that they're using crypto and what sort of differences are there in terms of consumer protection versus using cryptocurrency versus a credit card and what are the security risks for when they get hacked uh, right now we don't really as far as I understand have any sort of guidance on that for users we don't have any sort of public facing materials and so this quest would really be about a, providing that content for the movement building circle and the ambassadors so that they're knowledgeable and then diluting some of that into public, public facing content that can kind of provide a welcoming handhold for folks new to the space to assure them that, hey, 
this is new, it's a little bit scary, but it'll be all right. This is how you're gonna get taxed depending on the country and things like that. Um, so that's kind of this quest. And I'll just point to that, you know, on a longer term perspective, there's also been conversations about how useful it would be to have some sort of policy dashboard and roadmap looking across the globe at how is cryptocurrency being treated under different legal systems? What are the opportunities for seeds or alliance members or aligned interests to help shape some of that um, rather than antagonize? And would we ever want to get involved in, in policy change in that way? So that's just noting that that's kind of a long-term potential need that this would start to build towards. But for right now, this quest is just about a couple key deliverables about guides um, for people within hyphen seeds um, and then eventually users and new users. Epic. Uh, thanks, Tyler. I do have one question. Are you doing this pro bono? So this was the reason for um, Sarcasm, duplicating like. it. So I apologize for that confusion. When I first proposed it, um, there's a, a proposal down below that does have a salary just in seeds. Um, but this one, I was then told by folks in the movement building circle to apply again, but leave the salary completely blank. Um, so I would like to request seeds for this. I don't need um, fiat right now at all. Um, but um, my intention is not to do it all pro bono. I, I figured it wasn't. Um, what I'm then suggesting is just, well, you can't add it here, actually. No, but can you tell me, Tyler, what, what amount of seeds do you want? And I'll put it in the Tuesday notes as an addition to your, your proposal. Okay. If you uh, if you look at that original, whatever that original had. That's what um, you Oh, here it is. Oh, okay. So it's about $3,000 worth in deferred seeds and hyphen. Got it. Right? Uh, I believe 3000 Yep, cool. Um, awesome. Then we'll put this in the notes. So then when you are voting on this one, pretend that that number was in the information up above. So I guess it's all on chain somewhere. Cool. Uh, yeah, typically just a quick reminder when you're doing a quest, just put the amount you're requesting in the in the text field here. Cool. Okay, but not on the, right. the input field. Right. Put it in the okay. input field when it's claiming. When you've done the quest and you want to claim it, then you put it in the input. So that's the two sides of a quest. The first one is saying, hey, I'd like to do this. This is how much I want to get paid. And then when you've done it, then you make one that looks like this, where you actually claim it here in the boxes. And then up above, you just say like, hey, I've done it. Here's proof that I did it. Got it, thanks. Um, cool, any questions for Tyler on the actual proposal itself then? Cool. Um, uh, one one quick uh, comment, Tyler. So when you're uh, creating this, I think that it's an internal document initially that uh, the um, Haifa uh, financial and legal group um, should uh, receive as an internal document. Um, I agree with Ronnie that I don't know to what extent uh, we can uh, uh, do this guidance, but I think it would be good for you to uh, uh, prepare the best uh, uh, information we can have. Sounds yeah, good. I've, got, I've got a lot of um, uh, base, basic understanding that maybe I do or don't have around this, but um, my experience has been that, you know, this all, all, all of the things that you describe add a, a lot of risk um, to the entity in terms of giving this type of advice. So I'm just, uh, I'd love to spend some time and reconcile at least my understanding of the landscape and what you're proposing to do here, because um, I, I think it's uh, you know potentially um, challenging. So, but but again, I'd love to understand this better. Great, yeah, it would be be great to have that conversation. I think I'm seeing some points in the chat um, that I I don't think I'm trying to propose this as direct advice for people, more of an awareness of what are the sorts of questions that are going to come up in users. Um, what might they want to think about and what are additional resources that they can go to to find that guidance in terms of actual decision making on their own, but still would love to have that conversation. Cool. Yeah. Let, 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 just, let, let, 
Uh, sorry. Uh, just to give this contribution, this would be more making everyone's aware of uh, what is going on from a legal or regulatory uh, landscape at each uh, country. So making this uh, information visible, not as a sort of advice or guide, but more, okay, this is the information that we know it's available now, so you should read it. But um, I mean, my concern would be that as soon as we make a statement about it in any way, that is suddenly the official position of Haifa. So suddenly we're making a position, we're creating a position, like we say, this is our position on this. And then we're giving advice in all these legal entity uh, and all these legal environments. Um, I feel like that's, that will do more harm than good, actually. Uh, Nicholas, to that point, uh, the intent was for Tyler to do some kind of initial groundwork to see what is happening in terms of the landscape. And this is purely internal to us because right now, for example, there are requirements in terms of GDPR, CCPA, even that need to be actually checked off that we are not necessarily showing. So he's gonna do that initial analysis. Uh, and this came about as, a, as he very well articulated as part of the movement building there are fundamental gaps and he's just basically doing an analysis of it. No advice per se. Uh, excellent. So we could take this into the Discord for further discussion. Um, Tyler, thank you incredibly. Um, Kimberly, I think I saw you here, right? Yes, I'm here. Awesome. Um, okay, on this quest, it, this is uh, actually a, um, a duplication of an earlier one, a, a revision, so um, you will see that further down. But this is a, a quest that derived from um, storytelling, where I have been working in that, in that area and um, had been working on a role. Um, so this came out of the work that we did on the role, but I held the role back as we were sort of exploring um, where storytelling was, was heading, what we were gonna do, how those circles were gonna uh, unfold. So um, this is to basically um, create more content for the Seeds Library um, by bringing more people in through the ambassadors and the alliance and, and, and have it and amplifying the, um, the stories that we have there, especially for the alliances to show the work that is being done on the ground that we are supporting. Um, it's intended to increase participation um, of SEEDS members and content creators. Uh, I'll be um, proposing a badge system um, that would basically just bring people in who have the qualifications and we can kind of vet them to see if it's the right, um, if, if that's the right fit for them. Um, I, I realize that there's not necessarily any, any other perks or anything involved in that, just uh, it's really more for knowing that they're writers or they're editors or they're photographers um, and that they would be able to actually create quality content. Um, we would be making assignments, um, working with, you know, in the past we'd worked with Vlad on several um, um, articles that were for the Seats Library and basically um, this is a content steward so that everything that comes through is, is going through a system to make sure that it meets uh, our goals, our mission, uh, that it's not self-promoting. Um, and that it, and we've even had some, some that have come in through seeds um, that were not even related to seeds articles. So, you know, just making sure that those don't get posted and um, that there's some, some value to HIPAA, to seeds, uh, to the library for posting those stories. And also last thing is just to, uh, I created uh, guidelines, uh, new guidelines over the last couple of months and some tracking systems. And uh, we have some Asana boards uh, for assignments and um, we'll continue to use those uh, if I am approved for this quest. Um, I put this in um, at you know, the, the zero sa salary, uh, understanding that this system is changing so that we are paid as we deliver. So I'm uh, calculating a B5 rate of $78 per hour with 85% deferred seeds, 15% US dollar for one cycle to, to see how this works. 
questions. Awesome. So uh, Seeds Library stewardship quest. Um, cool. Any questions then for Kim? Beautiful. Uh, we're going to go on to Stephen Gomes. Yeah, hi everybody. I'm Steve Gomes and I've been working with the Sweet Team for a while since July 1st and uh, been so busy introducing different people within my network worldwide that I haven't got around to setting up a, uh, a contribution request uh, for some time now, but I'm going to be proposing a role and a, a uh, possible quest in the future. Um, a little bit about my background, because I know you don't know me. What I bring to this um, effort here is that I've worked in 102 countries so far. I uh, have a, a PhD uh, under a NASA PhD uh, program at the University of Pittsburgh in uh, public administration and international affairs. I've worked with large scale technical enterprises all over the world, building some of the largest projects in the world, uh, including the very largest one and doing the cross channel tunnel between England and, and France when I was with Bechtel Corporation. Um, and so I've been working to bring my networks into place, especially high wealth individuals into place and meeting with the suite team and trying to drive up and accelerate the launch and acceptance of seeds worldwide. And now I'm just seeking some compensation for that work with the suite team. Uh, and I will be uh, going forward, I'm going to be pretty dedicated to doing what I can to make seeds a success and, and make Haifa and seeds happen worldwide. Um, it's Ronnie here. I'd just like to add to Stephen as I've been on all the calls with him uh, since the very beginning. Um, you know, he's probably the person out of that original suite team and then onto a strategic advisor from my perspective that's added the most value and been the most supportive, um, you know, including uh, obviously bringing in Mark, but as well uh, a broad network of, of very interesting people uh, that we continue to mine together for, for the benefit of everyone. So uh, I'm very grateful to everything that Stephen's done so far and look forward to spending more time with him. Thanks, Ronnie. Appreciate that. Excellent. Thanks, Stephen, for that. Um, any other questions for Stephen? Comments? Thoughts? Okay. Um, so just to sum up, this is a contribution request for the last, you know, six months of him um, showing up and playing in Haifa. Awesome. Um, Lonnie. Hi, everyone. Um, nice to meet you. I'm Liu. I'm currently in Costa Rica. Uh, I'm sending also hi to Sri Lanka, where I was... Uh, yeah, locked down in the last eight months and uh, yeah, heard a lot about seats and Haifa and yeah, I'm really excited to uh, hopefully get the opportunity to contribute. Um, I've been talking to Max a little bit and yeah, I have a contribution or a proposal for a contribution for um, four to six weeks. I have a sort of product management, product management um, background and we've been talking a little bit about the do and the sort of social aspect and the profile of it and there's lots of potential for this to grow and from what i've heard there's already tons of ideas out there but um you might need help to sort of write them down in concrete requirements also filter a little bit what is a priority what's really important what do people want what do they need and yeah the idea is to create a product vision to make the personal profile of the do um yeah more 
interesting, more useful. Maybe you can showcase your badges, your roles you've been working on. You can follow people or follow certain topics and maybe, yeah, also explore <laughs> everything that comes with it. Maybe take a little bit of the noise of the Discord channel and sort of have an activity feed where you would find all the information that you want to find and uh, yeah, about your own votes and proposals. Um, and the key results that I would like to deliver in those four to yeah, or six weeks um, I propose are um, yeah, creating this product vision for the personal profile and come up with, yeah, do some research, talk to people, see what's, what's needed, best practices, and then come up with a sort of list of key features that we want. Um, then create wireframes and think a bit about the UX flow of this personal profile, but then eventually also manage to pick one, two, or three, depending on the size of those key features, and write user stories. So make it easy for the dev team to just grab one and start um, start developing them and uh, yeah, creating them. And yeah, we've been already talking about that. The notifications could be a super interesting feature about um, yeah that could be very helpful for people to get notified whenever you get paid, when your proposal gets voted up or down, and whenever things are happening. Um, yeah, I think that's not very concrete yet because it starts with yeah, seeing all the things that can be done and then picking again one or two and really trying to yeah, get them ready for development. Um, yeah, that's my proposal. Do you have any questions? I was going to say one quick comment. You know, I'm super supportive. Uh, Leo has been plugged into the dev team with the do for uh, a few weeks now and has been, you know, getting our feedback and and, and sharing her thoughts. And uh, I think it's going to be, it's going to really help uh, voter engagement. I mean, I've seen this call go from zero to three to 30. And, you know, it's not going to scale at 300 or 3000 when people are members of multiple organizations. So I think that, you know, putting some of that context and content, uh, uh, you know, in the do sort of in real time is going to be super helpful. Thanks. Yeah, <clears throat> thanks, Max, and thanks, Leonia. From my end, um, this is the beginning of expanding uh, the Duo development team and looking at the front end uh, and the design space a little bit more. So far, we had uh, one person doing the, the front end work. I've been doing some design work, and I love to expand that now so we can come up with this new feature more rapidly. Um, so we have our expansion there, um, and we are good on the uh, smart contract, which we're also expanding, right, the, uh, the back end team. Uh, so putting the duo into a position that we can uh, build more features uh, going forward, you know, towards December and January next year. Thank you. So does, uh, does this fall in the product circle or in the tech circle right now? Tech circle, right. Okay. And uh, because it very clearly articulates uh, very well, all everything tied to product management. Um, and I know we have those convergence discussions on product and uh, on tech and uh, movement building. So I just want to make sure there's no duplication, especially uh, Leon is talking about uh, uh, persona and profile. It, it seems very focused, which is great. I just want to make sure there's no duplication. Yeah, and it's a good question, Sanjay. This is a discussion we are starting to have now about the product circle, right? Where does it fit uh, in the overall structure of the organization, right? So far, it's all technology, but I do see there is a, a separate circle, either you know in parallel or as a sub-circle of uh, the overall tech engagement. Um, that's a discussion we will have in the next couple of weeks, I think. That's an important piece. Thanks. Okay, I have a question too, because this looks to me like a quest, but um, it's also looking like a role. So is, the, is this maybe just because of the confusions with the quest? Because normally the salary calculation piece at the bottom would be zero. And then this would be as described earlier by Reiki, this would come across as, is this something that the community wants? And then the proposal would go through and, and then later on it would you know, the the remuneration would be added in. Is that, is yeah, that um, that's a great question, CC. And let me let me answer that. I sort of um, 
uh, I guess, guided Leo on this process. And um, so we, we didn't post the proposal as a zero token sort of tell me if this is important quest because that was on as we were doing that at the time. Um, but it was well socialized with a lot of people. I, you know, we sort of talked to a lot of people um, that are engaged in this sort of aspect about it and got a lot of positive feedback, but we didn't do it formally. So, I mean, we can go back and, you know, she, she can go back and do that if you think that's a good idea, but that's sort of how it transpired because we hadn't yet formalized quests uh, proper. Okay, well, I love it. Um, and I would be definitely in favor for it. It's just that, you know, to retain the same structures for everyone um, and uniformity that I would, if it, was, if it was me to get my vote for this, I would suggest to do it in the same way to, you know, have it come through, say, does the ecosystem all agree on this? And then if so, detail how much of, you know, the, I think, I get the process. yeah, okay, well, you get the process. Uh, but that, so that, that, back on. that'd be what I would say. <laughs> Um, as always, and with everything, it always comes down to a vote. So what I like to elaborate is the policies that we come up with are just kind of like laws. And in a lot of countries, um, what are they called? What are people that go to court and they like- Lawyers? No, no, no. Judges? Yeah, it's kind of like the judges, but the, but the peers. Jury, jury. Jury. Jury can overturn any law and change it. So we have our policies, we have our suggestions, but ultimately it comes down to a vote. Um, so anyway, any other questions for Leo before we move on? Jerry, Jerry. Yeah, I noticed the same thing that CC was noticing, but I still voted for it because I feel like we just go with the momentum. It's already great momentum and everybody loves it. So let's just do it. <laughs> okay. Then we're going to keep moving on. Uh, we already went over this one with Tyler. Uh, we have one for Nyla. Uh, yeah, this was the batch. Um, we called it a quest at the time, but I, looking back, it was a bounty that the storytelling circle had assigned for creating new um, uh, new badges within the global passport. So not the same as DHO badges for the um, user status, visitor, resident, citizen. Um, those were all submitted uh, anonymously and the storytelling circle voted on one, which happened to be mine. So this is just me requesting the funds that were promised when we created that. Um, I did have a question at some point whether or not it was ethical to request this and I talked to Reiki about it. It was beyond the scope of my role and I did it on my own time. So we agreed that yes, indeed it would be ethical. So there it is. It's a bit late, apologies for that. Um, it was a couple months ago, but uh, it's in there now. Any questions? Um, just one quick question, Nyla. So, because I haven't uh, seen this kind of bounty thing before. So, people uh, in storytelling got together and said, hey, we want to have this thing done. Everybody submit. Whoever is voted gets this bounty, wins the, the prize. Is that how this worked? Yes, exactly. So if you go into the drive, there's actually a Google Doc where I put the original posts that were on Telegram, uh, Haifa Discord and Seeds Discord, I think it was on the 13th of September, where we said, we're going to do, we called it a quest, but technically it was a bounty. We're going to do this bounty. Um, it's the original badge posts, if you want to look at that. Um, we were doing this bounty, contact me for the brief, and then I gave them the brief, which is badges brief PDF there. Um, and we got submissions. Um, and then when we collected all those submissions, we took a look at them as a group and decided which one was going to be best. And it, it happened to be the one that I had designed. But they were all submitted anonymously. Does that answer your question? I, I have a question just around um, the fact that if somebody has a role, I, I believe you had a role at the time, which was for a hundred percent of your time. Uh, how does that work? If someone's got a role for a hundred percent of their time, can they then go and 
do a bunch of contributions which are outside their role on top of getting paid for their role. That to me just seems counterintuitive because you've had a role which is 100% committed to HIFA. So it seems like, okay, it, it just, if we're, if we're setting that precedent, that's a pretty big precedent to set. Um, and I just want to understand other people's views on that because it's quite surprising to me that you can have contributions or quests on top of a role if you have a role at 100%. Sure, I think that's a totally valid question. Um, basically, I'm not a designer. This is entirely outside of the scope of my role. It was something that I was curious about and decided to explore um, without any expectations. Um, I, I mean, like anybody can try and do anything and, you know, submit into a contest if it's done on their own time. Um, and, and that's what I did. Um, so, it, I mean, it was done, I, I did it on a Sunday. I, I mean, from my perspective, I did it on my own time in a field that's not my field. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel like it is, it's okay in this particular context. Yeah, I, I, I struggle with that, I've got to admit. If someone's got a role and they're 100% committed in that role uh, for Haifa, uh, to then go and do contributions, to ask for contributions for additional payments on top when you're already working 100%, um, it seems to be counterintuitive to me, unless we're saying that oh, okay. people can so more than um, okay. No, well, fully agreed. I think uh, you made your point. Should respond to that point. Uh, does anybody else want to make any points on uh, this contribution request? Cool, easy, then we'll keep moving. Uh, there's a few more things and I know we're 20 minutes over, so bear with us as we rush through this. Um, this is pretty straightforward. It's just covering costs. So if you feel like you should get reimbursed, go for it. Um, Kimberly, you've got two more going up here if you want to take the floor and speak on them. Yeah, this first one is just replaced by the previous um, okay. quest so that I already talked about. Yeah, because um, I, I redid it so that the salary calculation was uh, accurate to what you're looking for. And then on the contribution, uh, I've been working uh, within the storytelling and, and some with movement building, move and tell um, since the end of August. Um, I came in to work on the Seeds Library and sort of the um, capacity that I discussed in the quest. Um, I have listed out all of, well, <laughs> as many deliverables in a, as I can recall. Uh, some of those are documents. The documents are linked in uh, the Google Doc that I have attached to this. Um, so you can read that. And um, um, basically, this is a, a request just to, uh, for the uh, contribution of time plus some hard costs in a production that was put on in November. I believe I included those as well. Uh, yes. And uh, that's where the evaluation for 8,800 comes up, 85% deferred seas, 15 US dollars. At, at, a, at a band equivalent of about a B3, uh, $60 per hour. Um, and then I have a breakdown here of an estimate of hours that I spent. Um, again, this I, I, I am actually putting this in too at the uh, urging of people who believe that I have brought value to movement building and storytelling uh, and have said, you need to put in a, a request for contribution. So I'm doing it and I hope that you agree. And if you have questions and can't do them here, I'm on Discord. So just let me know. Great. Um, any quests or questions, sorry, for uh, Kimberly? OK. Awesome, awesome. Um, cool. So we have Jill, who um, Maybe I'll speak to. Um, so Jill is actually the one that took our, he created our current logo, the one that we've been using and seeing everywhere, like the 3D design of the current logo. Uh, a lot of the beautiful art that we put up, saw created by Jill, like some of the CGI background animation stuff. So we actually put a drive here. 
Um, this isn't quite full. I know he has a lot of other things he's going to add to this, but right now he's actually updating the art to be in line with the new graphics that we have. So I'll just give you a real quick idea here of what he's done. Um, OK, yeah, there's hardly anything in here. But anyway, um, he's the one that's done the OK, well, you can click on this link and go check it all out. Don't worry about it. Um, so if you feel like his art is worthwhile, um, I did kind of help him with this one because I mean, the amount of hours and time that he's put in to actually go through and rethink the logo that we've been using and design that and create it. And he originally did all this and was not going to ask for anything. But then I come to find out he's incredibly well paid by other people in the crypto space like EOS and Block One. So anyway, I really personally pressured him to uh, go ahead and put in a contribution request to make sure it's being recognized. Um, so he's not asking for anything up front. OK, so that was me, Reiki speaking. I'll put my facilitator hat back on. Uh, does anybody have any questions for me via Giel? Giel. Uh, I have a quick question, Reiki. Sure. Um, I definitely think that Giel should be paid for the work that um, he's done on the logo, but I was really confused by this, whether this was a request for work done or a quest for work to be done because it seemed to be a combination of both. <clears throat> it's a, a little bit of a combination of both, um, but this price is actually just for the work already done. What he's going to do, which is nice, is also do some more work, which is update all of his previous work to the new brand colors because uh, the previous logos and stuff were all um, using the old color scheme. So it's previous work also updated. So there's some ongoing work involved as well. So a little bit of both. Uh, I have a question also, what is the total ask here? I'm totally confused with these numbers. You see the, the H voice when there's no, anyway, H voice is the dollar amount. Okay. Um, okay. Is there a breakdown? So then it's a dollar amount of uh, 11,000, 1100. Lots of ones, um, and then it's all deferred, so it's getting paid in season. I thought. Cool. I I think that maybe there should be some breakdown of the costs. Is that detailed here? So there's not a breakdown of the costs, and actually, based on previous discussions, I I personally don't want to see that. That's not necessarily part of the OKRs. It's more like what was delivered. Um, so that's what I asked him to put here is the actual deliverables, which he's putting in this Google Drive. So you can go in there and see some of the art that was actually created for this cost. Um, I think that kind of goes for all of OKRs is that you don't need to necessarily do a breakdown of the time because that's less relevant to Haifa. What's relevant is what was actually delivered and how much you're asking for and if those things match. If you're some type of superhuman and you could do it in one hour that's fine you know if it took you 30 it's anyway doesn't matter uh cool any questions about this before i move on easy okay um can anyone speak to game of seeds front end dev from alex Um, it looks like he's asking for a contribution for 40 hours a week, $40 an hour, blah, 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 $6,000, $6 dollars for a front end dev. Um, so. What I can briefly say is that he, uh, he wanted us to include another Ember developer for the Global Passport to help on, on developing the game of seeds, which there's a lot of stuff to, be, to develop right now. So the actual dev team will be more focused on the after deliverables and the game of seeds development will be followed by the, another developer, which is LDN. So it will be mostly for the game of seeds development. Okay, so it looks like Alex started this contract and he's wanting us to upload this to reimburse him because it looks like he's fronting that. So that's what's being asked for here. 
Um, okay, and that is everything for Tuesday Tuesday. So, you know, bear with us. It took about an hour and a half. Um, one more. What I want to one more. <laughs> oh, we got him. One more. What's that? We have one badge assignment proposal. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Oh, badge assignment. Ah, there we go. Badge assignment for Haifa, New York. That is for myself, that's for a treasurer. Uh, this is again, the first badge, the badge was voted in. Uh, treasurers are uh, a group of five uh, eventually. This is just for the first one uh, for multi-sig uh, control over uh, Haifa's multi-chain assets. So some of the assets that we have on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, so some of the important um, you know, capabilities for someone with this badge would be a very uh, strong focus on security, uh, which if you know me, then, then you, you would know that I, I focus a, a lot on uh, security and also attention to detail and understanding a bit about how the tokens and the smart contracts and things like that work. So please, uh, I ask for your vote. And uh, I won't be the only treasurer, of course, uh, and I'll never have, no single treasurer will, will ever have um, single control over any of the assets. Uh, but other treasurers you'll see come in here probably for next week. Let me know if you have any questions. Yeah, so this is question. also, okay, a, go ahead. I have a question, Max. I'm just curious as how it's done right now without a treasurer, how, how are, decisions made regarding the uh, current asset pool for uh, what we currently hold? That's a great question. Before we had badges, uh, this was many, many months ago, I would say in February, I want to say, we had an, a proposal for an election process. And as part of that proposal, we elected five treasurers, uh, myself, Joaquin, Nick, Reiki, and Alex. And it requires three of us to approve any uh, movement of tokens. Uh, no single person can do it. It's all multi-signature. So I'm just the first one to actually apply for the formal badge. So what this is yeah. actually opening up the process to is giving the entire community the authority of who's the treasurers here. So they can remove Max if they don't trust him anymore. <laughs> Um, so, so this is also the first step, the first time that we're using badge assignments, right? So remember last time we uh, voted in for the treasurer badge, under badges, now we have the first assignment. Um, here's actually a new badge, I just wanted to bring this up too, I created that yesterday. This is the badge librarian badge. So this is kind of a meta badge, this is a person uh, to understand what currently, what kind of uh, badges we currently have and to help develop new badges for the organization, right? So this person can take care of, uh, you know, who's creating the badges? Do we have the right uh, coefficients for the badges? You know, uh, are they designed in the right way? You know, is the icon okay for that badge? You know, are the multipliers all within the range? Um, so kind of an administrative uh, function, but with a good understanding of uh, what uh, badges currently exist in the organization. So we don't have uh, duplicates or badges that really wouldn't fit into the overall badge, uh, you know, features that we have. Um, so that's the new badge uh, for the badge librarian. Again, this is a proposal for a badge. We don't have anybody voted in yet. That's coming after we agree on uh, using this badge here at Haifa. All right, any questions on the badge assignment slash badge? Cool, epic stuff. I really love seeing this through. I think this will be a really, really interesting area to explore with all these badges. All right, so I'm gonna keep you all for two more minutes in case there's any last questions, thoughts, wisdom that wanna be put into this space, um, whether anything do related or anything that we've covered today that feels important. Okay, I actually wanna say something. Um, from my circle specifically, I would love it if you guys could all have a look at the onboarding 
link that I, I could put in the notes so you can all see it in the Tuesday Tuesday notes on Discord. And also just a friendly reminder that if we are doing things before going through a quest or before going through a rule or before you know, having an agreement with Haifa, it is a risk. And I really just want to, you know, press that in because we keep seeing these come up through people circle and um, the tension is high. So let's maybe if we have people that are excited, we can put them through this new onboarding process. Hopefully that will solve some of the issues that we're facing and make things more fun for us all here on Tuesday, Tuesday. All right. Um, anything else want to be shared? Okay, Effort Cumans. Um, thank you for joining us on Tuesday, Tuesday. Uh, this is kind of a big one. Uh, I don't actually imagine them getting shorter as Haifa keeps scaling and expanding. So we'll just keep bearing with us. There's a lot that gets covered on these calls. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, typically, what I love doing is passing off to some random person to give us a sign off. And that's just some nice phrase or some thought to carry with us for the rest of the day. Um, so I'm going to randomly look at whoever's at the top of my list. And that is Leo. If you want to give us something, putting you on the spot, you're okay with that. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat that? Um, just some nice phrase or some sign off to say goodbye if you have one. To say goodbye. Well, I can talk in German to you a little bit. If I don't know if anyone would appreciate that, <laughs> uh, except Jachen. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna say uh, Auf Wiedersehen and have a great day or night, depending on where you are. <laughs> Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> Tschüss. Bye. Auf Wiedersehen. Ciao.